What is up? Welcome back to Fudge Muppet. My name is Scott and today I'm going to be showing you some of the best ways I've found to become a full-time explorer of the galaxy and also get some insane XP along the way. Be sure to subscribe because there is even more helpful Starfield content on the way. Starfield is an immensely vast game with heaps of gameplay and role-playing variation and one of the most surprisingly satisfying experiences I've had in the game is actually in the exploration of planets. I for one was a little skeptical of how interesting it would be just traveling to different planets with only planets and animals and some outposts and such, especially as some degree of randomization is involved. But my god was I surprised at how fun it is. I consistently came across amazing new biomes and creatures and so many tense moments running away from these bone frill monsters far above my level or just some serious David Attenborough moments as I explored a savanna and went big game hunting, seeing nautilus flying creatures and seeing giant dodos or these muppet spore looking creatures. There is so much to explore and see, so much potential for organic survivalist experiences, being a beast hunter, going to high level planets and trying to bag a serious monster, or being a xenobiologist and observing and recording nature in all its wonders. It is definitely an element of the game you have to experience and if you make some smart skill choices you can rack up some serious XP as well, helping your leveling along the way. But let's get started. Many characters are going to take part in exploration of the frontiers, but I'm going to tell you A, how to do it, and B, how to optimize for it. When you go to the map menu and select a system, you can scan the planet and see what kind of environment is on it, as well as differing amounts of flora and fauna. When you land on the planet and open your scanner, you will notice that there is a tally saying zero out of a number. This is the number of fauna or flora species you must discover. And also there is a tally for resources discovered. And there are these question marks which represent planet traits. These these are things like glacial remnants, hives, fungal growths, meteor showers, and so on, essentially unique features of the land. To 100% a planet, every one of these tallies needs to be checked off and the traits need to be discovered and scanned. This will yield a big chunk of experience and you will get an item called survey data, named after the planet, and this can be sold for a chunk of credits depending on the size of the planet. For example, with no commerce skill, the smallest moon's data sell for around 500 credits, planets around 3000, and some of the later higher level planets even more like 5,000 credits. You will be surprised that this is a decent way to stack up some serious credits if you invest in exploration skills, also for basically no inventory weight as opposed to collecting loot. As for ticking off the tally, you want to open your scanner and observe resources, flora or fauna, highlighted in blue. Resources require only a single check, so for example you find some metal, you scan it, that will contribute to say 1 out of 7 resources. Resource scanning is the easiest part. When something is scanned to completion it will turn green on the scanner. Sometimes Sometimes you will also notice that the whole ground seems to light up a certain color and a mineral pops up in your scanner. This is marking an underground source of the mineral that you can't access by hand. However, you can build an outpost and build an extractor machine that can pull up those minerals. To make an outpost, open the scanner and press X, then place the beacon and now you can access the build menu. It is worth noting that in houses or apartments you buy in cities, you also open the scanner and press X to decorate. As for fauna and flora, these require multiple scans in order to catalog the information. When you scan a species, the blue highlight will fill in on that individual and as you hover the reticule over other creatures, you will begin to notice that it tells you a percentage scanned. To begin with, with no skill investment, eight of each species of plant or animal must be recorded before it is considered complete and then it marks off one of the total number of flora or fauna species in the tally. As you scan the fauna and flora, hovering over them will give you additional information including resources that can be harvested from them, as well as the species temperament, what biomes they can be found in and abilities they may have. Additionally, it is worth noting that killing a creature counts towards the scan. So as for animals, you could kill eight without scanning them and it will check off the tally. Important if you want to try and keep a healthy distance and not risk getting close to some dinosaur tier monster. Also, even if you didn't kill the creature, you can approach the corpse of them and scan them too. You will notice as you check off flora and fauna on most planets before reaching the total number, you will find that it says in green text next to the uncompleted tally, biome complete. This means in this biome you have discovered all the available flora and fauna. In order to finish surveying this world, you will have to go into the planet map and look around the planet, select spots to see what biomes exist, and next to the biome names such as wetlands, mountains, sandy desert, tropical forest, deciduous forest, etc., you will see a percentage. If it isn't 100%, then there is more in this area to complete. Now, I will give you a little tip I didn't figure out until later. On some planets, you may go to every biome and realize you've got a 100 
100%. But then if you click on the ocean, you realize it says 0%. This is because there are marine animals in the game. However, you can't land in the ocean. If you are careful with the cursor, you can find areas on the planet that say biome name, such as tropical forest, with coast in brackets. This is where you need to go. When you land, get to a high point and try and figure out where the ocean is, take a short hike and get to the coast. Here, get in the water or traipse up and down the coast with the scanner and look for underwater creatures, scan them, and you're done. This little tip I would have loved to know way earlier. It would have saved me a lot of frustration on 98% complete planets that I ended up abandoning. To 100% the planet, you also need to discover every trait as well. They are marked in the scanner HUD as these unknown black orbs with various symbols. We are typically looking for ones that say natural or life signs, and these are the traits you need to hunt down and scan. Structural ones are things that will not count towards the survey, things like abandoned facilities or science outposts. I also haven't had caves count. Once you have 100 percent of the planet, enjoy a fat stack of XP and the survey data which can then be sold. So now you understand the functions of the scanner and how to explore and record these beautiful alien worlds, let's make the process a whole lot easier with skills and tips. You can absolutely optimize your character for exploration and make it a core part of your playstyle. I loved it and it provides a fantastic breakup between questing and often when I was sent to a new planet for a quest, I would go off and explore the rest of the world, gaining a ton of extra XP and excitement. Do note that exploring does not mean you have to be into resource collection. Outpost building and crafting is an independent facet of gameplay, but there is of course crossover. Firstly, the science skill group is your friend here. The very first skill you want to grab is the surveying skill. This drastically speeds up the process and can make the exploration a whole lot less dangerous as throughout the ranks you can build up to a 50 meter scanning range. This is so great to have, it makes the process much smoother. After accessing tier two of the science skills, there are a few few helpful skills for exploration, but the most vital one in my opinion is zoology. Zoology increases the number of harvestable resources from fauna, which is nice and works well with a crafting or an outpost building character. However, it is the other effect that is truly amazing. Each successive rank reduces the number of times a single animal must be scanned by one. Without the skill, you need eight. At rank one, you need seven. At rank two, you need six. At rank three, you need five. And at rank four, you only need to scan four creatures to complete the species for the survey. This is an absolute game changer, and it's what allows you to survey planets far quicker and level up really fast. The botany skill has basically the same outcome, but for flora instead, which also dramatically speeds up the process. However, if you are being conservative with your skill points, I do find that searching for animals is the more difficult part of the process because some can be quite rare or small, and plus they move around, which can make them more difficult to track down. But what is fantastic is that zoology rank 4, you can often find a pack of animals and scan 4 immediately, and then two hunting pairs of some other creature and check that off fast. This may not matter on some planets with marginal flora and fauna, say 3 or 4 of each, but you will find planets with 13 animal species to check off and multiple biomes, and that can take some serious time without the zoology skill. I love those planets though, it's such a cool experience finding planets with big biodiversity. And speaking of which, this is one of the highlights. Even at 70 plus hours into a single playthrough of a dedicated explorer, I'm still finding new creatures. Sometimes you get repeats with different roles like grazers, hunters, herds, etc., or with different sizes or colors, but you need to do some serious exploring to even potentially see everything that's available. I'm still discovering new creatures. I've seen some crazy stuff too, such as tank as hell caterpillars that do intense damage if you let them get close, giant dodo dinosaur creatures, even camouflaged creatures like I found on this savannah planet. Freaky ads. Like I said, you can also do the botany skill to speed up the plant surveying process, which I recommend if you are a dedicated explorer build. But if you really just wanted to dabble, I'd take the surveying and zoology skills. But there is more. A really fun way to play it, especially if you're going for some kind of beast hunter character, setting up a hunting encampment on this alien planet, you can make an outpost, put down a small habitat, maybe some beds, and build a scanner booster. There are various versions of this, but these devices function to boost your scanning range of your hand scanner, and this is something you can use instead of the surveying skill. If you are fully committed to the surveying and exploring lifestyle, there are also two other skills to recommend. They are scanner and astrophysics. The first of which is in tier two, and it allows you to glean more information about resources and the planet in general from scans of it before you land. More so something to consider for a 
resource outpost character, but also there is astrophysics, which is in tier three. And this is part convenience, part speeding up the process once more. At first, you can scan the moons of a planet you are looking at without having to travel to them. Next, you can scan the whole system without having to travel to each planet individually. Then after you can scan any system 16 light years away from where you are. And at the final rank, you can scan anywhere up to 30 light years away. On top of that, at the final rank, you have a 50% chance of discovering a planet trait from a scan of a planet. And previous ranks have the same effect, but for a lower chance. This can be immensely useful when scanning planets, cutting down exploration time quite often, making your job much easier. Again, these are more optional skills for a more committed explorer, but surveying and zoology would be helpful for pretty much everyone. And remember, when completing a planet, especially the more life-filled ones, you can net some serious experience. And if you want to take it to the next level, you will get some crazy good experience from just killing animals, especially when you can drop those high-level creatures from a distance. Beast Hunter playthroughs are gonna pay off big, especially as you kill creatures far above your level with your sniper from the safety of a perch as you sit in concealment. As another note, I would highly recommend for any dedicated explorer that you prioritize the fitness and boost pack skills. These will make traversal way easier and faster, plus boost pack is really useful when trying to escape a vicious pack of animals. Some of these creatures are ridiculously fast, like you just can't outrun them without maneuvering the geography well or boost packing out of there. By the way, I should also mention that while at first cities may feel very hub-like, you can actually just walk out of the city into the wild and begin exploring the vast wildlife most of the main planets have. And on top of that, I should say that the scanner does show arrows on the ground directing you to your next quest marker which is helpful sometimes. But speaking of quests and missions and such, I would absolutely recommend taking all the missions you can from the Constellation mission board found in the basement of the lodge, but you can also make one at your outpost. These are radiant missions which involve tasks such as simply scanning certain planets or completing surveys, and they are easy ways to ramp up the leveling because on top of surveying planets and getting a ton of XP in general, you'll also be getting XP and credits for completing the mission on top. As a final recommendation, I would say to upgrade your ship's grav drive and also add extra fuel tanks to make travel throughout the systems much easier as your travel range increases. The companion Sarah Morgan also has the skill astrodynamics so that when she is assigned to your crew you will get far more out of your grav drive adding to the distance you can travel. But that I think is pretty much everything you need to know to optimize your exploration of the galaxy. Dedicated explorer characters and beast hunters are really fun to play and mind you it's not just plants and animals. You'll come across random encounters and ships of pirates landing or spaces that have hunkered down in an old UC base or abandoned lab. There is so much fun to be had in exploration. I think it's BGS's finest open world experience in all honesty. This was a big surprise for us and I'm super keen to see how you guys find it. And do make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we'll be coming out with so many role-playing builds, some of which are definitely going to be explorer-centric playstyles. Keep an eye out for a sniper a beast hunter build. I think it's going to be so good. Thanks so much for watching. Give the video a like to support the Starfield content. My name is Scott and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.